category of startups is start that have been started by faculty within the system. So I'm going to ask Professor Shankar Narasimhan, professor at chemical engineering, to talk about a company called Gyan Data, which he has, uh, which he has started up. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, it, it is with a great deal of trepidation that I stand in front of you. I'm used to delivering lectures in class, uh, in classes uh, where I feel comfortable. This is out of my skin area. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in my uh, midlife crisis, uh, what do I call uh, senility, that I started this uh, company along with my colleagues, uh, I need to probably face audiences like you. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this was about a year and a half ago. We started this uh, company called Gyan Data. Or, uh, as somebody said, that's being very presumptuous of you, uh, knowledge giver. Uh, so those of you who don't uh, believe that we can give, we can call it GAN data, uh, which means knowledge from data, which is the big buzzword today. So we are good in data analytics, one of the area, strong areas, so using that as a kind of a core competency, we are developing solutions for uh, process industries, manufacturing industries. Um, that's our goal, is to provide uh, solutions to challenging technical problems for improving productivity and efficiency. And uh, uh, we have looked at a uh, typical uh, scenario in India. There are not too many uh, technology providers in the high end, what we call the high end area, uh, where a lot of deep analysis is required. Uh, there are, of course, uh, R&D, uh, uh, what I call divisions of uh, public sector companies, and uh, even private companies, uh, Lens and so on. But certainly, I don't still think that they have way to go before they really provide. They solve day-to-day -day problems predominantly. And if the problem becomes complicated, they either go abroad or probably don't solve the problem. And this is where we think we can come. Most of them approach IITs, of course. I mean, I, I, I do say that you know, we have been involved in the last 25 years in solving problems. But uh, within any academic institutions, we can only go so far. We don't ever complete the, uh, take it to the problem, make sure that it works in, in the field. We kind of give a solution and back off. Uh, that's where I think you know, a company can fill the gap of uh, doing the finishing touches to the uh, uh, solution. Uh, the, the, uh, a second kind of problem that we noticed is uh, uh, I had, at least uh, uh, during my last 25 years in academics, uh, tried to work with industry in developing products. And we find that uh, in the engineering area, uh, there are no software products from India that are actually uh, taken the world by storm. Uh, we have a great uh, revolution in IT, but surprisingly in the engineering sector, there are no software uh, products that are very well known. Um, there might be a small, uh, uh, what I call, uh, uh, achievements here and there, but not in a big way. And uh, we have attempted that. It's not that we are not attempted. And again, as I say, that there has not been a finish. I have worked with uh, R&D companies and uh, tried to develop products right from my early days and uh, found that, you know, at some stage it's kind of uh, comes to a stop. Uh, there is no support, for example. Once a product is developed, who is going to do the support? That doesn't exist. So, need for that is where we felt that if we really want to convert some of the ideas that, is, uh, that are generated in an institution and kind of develop it further and provide a, a product which is famous, then we need a company which is going to do a lot of the additional support. And that's one of our uh, goals with which we started. These are some broad goals. I'm not going to say that we did a lot of market survey and so on. That we just uh, said that we have a vision that some, we should at least have one or two at the end of maybe five years or ten years down the road, a product that is considered uh, uh, truly out of India and has a worldwide uh, reputation in, in the engineering sector. Okay. So we do have uh, a lot of uh, uh, domain expertise in engineering that we are assembling, a high quality team. Typically graduates, uh, graduates from uh, uh, IITs who have a master's or a PhD degree. And that's the kind of people we seek and we kind of assemble them. Uh, good analytical skills, because mostly what we are dealing with uh, problems that require not just modeling, optimization, a lot of analytical skills. And so we are uh, trying to look for people in the, that area and assembling them. And the focus areas, in, in uh, typically we are looking at uh, uh, water and energy, which seems to be the, uh, uh, the key areas, at least in India, that's going to uh, uh, hit us badly in the last next four or five years water usage and energy usage. Both of these, uh, already there is a document published from the GOI which says how much energy should be cut in different, different industries. They have actually identified. And uh, there is going to be certainly a lot of problems that need to be solved if, if you need to improve efficiency in both these areas. Uh, 
diagnosis and control. This is actually in terms of health, monitoring the health of uh, equipment. There are a lot of asset management uh, tools available. We have some expertise that we want to leverage there. And uh, the last phase that we are now beginning to notice is, in order to even penetrate, we need to educate people. So high-end education is something that, you know, uh, uh, it's not uh, readily available in this country, specialized areas at least. Uh, this is an area we feel, the feel that, you know, after a year or so in the business, find that's a that's, uh, niche area where we can fulfill, uh, fill with our own competence, with our, with our competence that we have. So being an academic, again, uh, having some experience in that, we are also getting into the education sector, but only at the, uh, the master's level and so on. So I'll show you something what we have uh, started off. Uh, initially, uh, since we didn't have a product that we could actually go or push the market, we don't have skills in marketing, we don't have a sales team or advertisement team, so we said we'll start with solving problems, one-off problems, which are kind of related, take pieces out of it and develop the product around it, okay, mingle it with what we have, of course. So that's what we are doing, in the initial area we are doing one-off problem solving, just like we do in an IIT, but here with a clear aim of seeing it through, right. And uh, the second thing is to take what we have already done and convert it, but that we have not even begun. We have just kind of identified what are the pro, uh, skill sets and pro, products we have already have, unfinished products, and that shaping up will have to be done in the next stage. So that's the strategy we are adopting. So uh, in terms of current team members, we have uh, three of us who are all chemical engineers. One is a faculty in chemical engineering, uh, Raghu, and uh, Venkat Subramaniam is a faculty from Columbia University. We are all the uh, founding directors, you might say. Uh, and uh, employees wise, we have all again chemical engineers, all chemical engineers graduates from IIT, a BTEC, a dual degree student, a master's uh, student, MTech and an MS. Uh, we are actively encouraging one of the things we want to do also, uh, provide an environment where the students actually take on a higher degree. So it's a free movement between the company and the institute. So uh, one of the employees actually has come back as a full-time PSC student, another might do it next year. So we are kind of trying to encourage them to take on, because we do believe whatever uh, uh, things they get, skills they get, will be plowed back into, into our thing. They are going to be very useful. So this is, a, this is what we started with. We have no advisory board as yet. All our advisors are faculty members, colleagues, uh, whom we talk uh, in the corridors and so on. And uh, this is an area where we seriously think we need to address. Uh, we need somebody who can address us uh, things we don't know about. And uh, hopefully at some point we will get to it. Uh, the connection to IITM, of course, is obvious. I'm, uh, we are faculty members of IIT. We are uh, part of the IITM incubation policy that uh, hopefully will be discussed uh, at the end of this thing. We are not formally, we have been uh, uh, approved by IITM to start this. In, in that sense, uh, an IITM incubated company. We are also located, located in the IITM research park, okay, uh, and which provides the, uh, the, both the space as well as the ambience for us to actually grow. Uh, technical services. We market survey, we didn't do anything. We really didn't go around and see what, what's the market volume. I, I mean, there, were, there are reports about billions of dollars lost due to uh, equipment breakdowns. So I know that there is asset management is an important thing it's going to. But uh, I mean, these numbers mean nothing to us. Essentially, uh, what percentage of the market we can capture? No idea. So we just didn't bother about going and saying, okay, uh, what is the market? Do we get a per thing? Because we are not relying on a single product at all. That's not going to be our goal. We don't have a single flagship product which we think that, you know, uh, around which we are going to do all our uh, revenue earnings. Uh, education, on the other hand, we have some statistics and that is also provided by a partner. Uh, there are about uh, 150,000 engineers being, uh, uh, what I call, graduating every year from India. And uh, we have heard numbers, most of them saying that only 15,000 are employable in the engineering sector or in the IT sector, I don't know what they mean, but certainly in the engineering sector, most of them are not employable. And that's, that's because, not because they have to be blamed, it's simply the education institutions are not providing uh, the kind of education required even to solve some of the day-to-day -day problems that occur in industry. That's what we feel. So there is, uh, we also know there is a significant of outflow of money from India to gain degrees from abroad, whether it's at, at the undergraduate level, but also at the postgraduate level. And uh, again, lack of good colleges can be the only reason why, why, why these people are actually go out and try to earn degree. So the education sector seems to be there a lot of money available if you want to want to tap into this. And uh, we, we feel that that's, that's uh, we have added on to it. Initially, we were not very sure uh, why a company should be doing education. Uh, why not from IIT itself? 
but uh, later on we realized that niche, there are niche areas where a company can actually provide and we are, we are learning on the job and I can tell you what, uh, what some of the things we are doing in this. Okay. Immediate term, as I said, we are, we are providing solutions to specific problems. We have done some uh, search analysis in pipelines, which is a very, very simple thing. But there are a lot of products out there in the market, but we develop our own solutions. We have not, there are companies in India, I have noticed in the last five years or uh, seven years which have started, which provide high-end technical solutions. But they use products that are bought out from abroad. They are licensed uh, uh, software products, which, which cost anywhere between uh, um, close to about uh, even uh, as, as much as a crore if you want to buy them outright. But uh, typically they lease them for some and then they just deploy them as it is. Maybe add on a little bit of their expertise. We are not going that route. Whenever something comes to us, we try to develop the thing in-house. Uh, so unless otherwise demanded, we try to actually use our own uh, skills in solving problems. Uh, so we do uh, a specific data analytics program, which I will actually give you a, a small example towards the end. So we have also started offering short-term courses in niche areas to students and private sector employees. This is basically in the use of computational tools, which are widely used in engineering. So your typical product can be kind of a process simulator, which people use to solve problems. So we just give a training program, which might run about two weeks to a, a, a month or so, and equip them so that they can go and probably leverage that to get a job. That's the kind of thing that we are uh, kind of concentrating on. Not a typical course-based uh, uh, kind of education, but a tool-based education, you might say. Uh, long term, we have uh, uh, tied up with somebody to uh, a couple of organizations to give a MTech degree in, in, uh, in uh, again, computational engineering, which is our speciality. And uh, we are also trying to look at software products in the areas of water distribution, management, diagnostics, and so on. But that's a long term. We haven't started much. The first one, we have already made some uh, start starts. Okay, how, how are we going to the market? We are again, we don't do much of traveling. We don't go and talk to people that we have something to sell. We just sit in our offices and are going to do it. And basically, we are doing three modes. One is we are bidding for projects, like we do as an academic, and we write proposals and get money. And uh, there are companies such as Nine Sigma and a few others where we have registered and uh, we get these requests for proposals and we write. It's a very quick uh, thing. I mean, you need to write a three-page proposal in most cases. And we have won a, a couple of contracts already. So sitting here, without even meeting the client, we are actually delivering solutions through the thing. And we send the solution. They send the data. We sign a confidentiality agreement. They send the data. We analyze. Send the report to them. So those are the kind of things that we have done through Nine Sigma. That's a Belgian company uh, which, which uh, uh, sends out requests for proposals almost every week. And what is in our area, we kind of uh, uh, write a proposal and bid for it, and competitively bid for it and get it. Uh, at the discipline, we are only relying on our reputation, which we hope we have. Past students, fortunately, we have several of them working in R&D companies, R&D of public sector and private companies. And uh, again, because we have, all three of us have uh, interacted with industries right through our career. We have some reputation, you might say, uh, uh, within them, and so we are relying on it primarily for for uh, for our uh, growth. Uh, website seems to attract a few uh, uh, what I call clients, and uh, inquiries received from ICSR, where we are very clear that there is a product to be delivered or a solution to be delivered and implemented on the field. So the way we have segregated is problems which require idea testing that gets done only in ID and problems that are already known solutions, and there's only an implementation aspect to it, that we'd actually take it over to the company. That's the way we are clearly dividing our roles as, as academic uh, members as well as uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, tie up, the other thing that we are doing is instead of actually, we are not planning on a, on a big uh, marketing team and so on. Uh, that's not our competency. So we are trying to see whether we can tie up with partners who will do all the marketing and field implementation. Even in a product, we find when we deal with data, for example, you need to actually implement it on a, on a SCADA system, on a control, and work with the, with the process online. And that skill, uh, we may not even have, neither do we wish to develop it. So we are tying up with the company and jointly developing the product where we own a very small percentage of the, of the uh, uh, product rights. Uh, so they do all the marketing, they do all the implementations, and we only provide the technical backup and get a small share for that. And we have tied up with a couple of companies for product product development in this mode. Okay, so the first uh, thing that uh, immediate uh, thing that we are doing is with a foundry. Uh, typically, in a, in the cast iron foundries, they find there's about 10 to 12 percent rejects on uh, on uh, on cast products. 
and uh, worldwide, if you look at it, it's typically 2 to 3 percent. And uh, this might be pr primarily because the level of automation is not very high, perhaps, but it's also because they have not done a clear uh, data analysis to find out what are the best operating practices and uh, uh, utilize them in the, in the, in the uh, manufacturing. Uh, so we are working closely with the person who supplies material to the foundries who have contact and we have developed a product along our, uh, this li line where we uh, provide a platform uh, to upload the data, to store it and we provide a lot of analytics which tell them what are the best operating practices. And uh, this is one thing that's ready for release in the next month. And as I said, we are not doing the marketing. The, the, our partner will do all the, all the uh, uh, associated marketing and the implementation and so on. The second is we are launching an M-Tech degree in computation engineering. This is the tie-up with Sierra Academy, which has the infrastructure for online uh, education services, and JNTU, which is the degree granting uh, uh, university. They already have a tie-up for some other M-Tech course. So we are doing uh, the content development for computation engineering, all the courses, the two-year M-Tech program, and, but the degree offering and, the, and the, the hardware infrastructure for offering it is done through, through other uh, uh, partners. And the whole lot of uh, uh, things that we have in, uh, in operate data analytics and uh, thing, as, as I said, in, in, in areas that, uh, that is our expertise. But again, we are still talking with the people who will tie up with us in, in developing these uh, products uh, together. So I've just, uh, since the lack, lacking time, I will just not uh, 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 give you any, any further things. This is a specific uh, technical uh, example that I have. If, if need be, I will talk about it uh, since there's not, not much time. Let's stop here. Yeah, the BHL product, I mean, this is one area again where data analytics comes in handy. BHL project is about the development of a super critical test, uh, what you call boilers. And they have a test facility in uh, Trichy and where they collect a lot of data and they develop what is called the heat transfer correlation, which is used in the design of the boiler. But they find that the data that they gather has got small errors. And if they develop the correlation based on this, it is uh, fairly erratic and you cannot use it in a systematic manner. So where we come in is uh, uh, a kind of what we call an a, a in-house developed uh, uh, procedure in how to deal with errors in data. So that's, a, that's my forte. So basically look at uh, things in a consistent manner. For this you need to develop a very uh, a detailed mathematical model of the, of the entire uh, uh, facility. So you have, a, uh, you have to model the pipe through which the fluid flows. Uh, you need to actually model the, uh, the thermal conductivity in the, in, the, in the metal and you have to model the insulation and uh, identify. This is a standard heat transfer problem, but you need to be very careful. Detailed level of modeling is done and essentially the, uh, the temperatures that are obtained basically are, are on the skin. The pipe temperatures, you can't measure the fluid temperatures unfortunately. We don't know why. But at this point in time, they are able to only probe, probe the metal temperatures from which they have to develop the, the correlation between the, the heat transfer process from the metal to the thing. Lots of problems. The power that is provided to the metal is not taken up by the fluid plus the losses. It doesn't balance out. That's because again of errors in data. So we provide a consistent picture and we clean up the data before we actually do the development and get a fairly thing. This is something that's, that's, that we come in with our skills if you might say. And it's a... Uh, it uses the engineering knowledge plus the data analysis knowledge to actually provide this. So there are a lot of additional things are there in terms of identifying what we call operating steady operating periods from the data. So when you do an experiment, they start up and they actually, uh, by the end of the day, they have a experiment data. But you need to pick those operating periods which are fairly what we call steady. And you need to an automatic detection algorithm. So that's what we are doing right now. We already have some methodology. So we are automatically extract the relevant data that should be used in modeling. You could actually look at it like a trend analysis in financial time series. We notice that there's a similar kind of thing that might be applicable there. So we are expanding on this to see whether ultimately we could, we could analyze even stock prices data and so on. But that's... that's what Thanks. So I think again, in the interest of time, we'll move on. Uh, but again, if you have questions for Gyan Data or Gyan Data as the case may be,